This is an audio response to a video that God willing to a stop put up about a phone call between the atheist experience and G-Man over the issue of slavery in the Bible. That is a justice issue that does have to be um, threshed out and as I've said in my other videos if you want to deal with disputing or debunking the Bible you should focus on justice issues and forget the science thing primarily because all humans knew the science that we know today anyhow so that doesn't prove pro or con the Bible and the Bible already supports the science we know it's just that Christians and atheists are unaware of what the Bible actually says okay so put that aside the science thing now we're into the justice issues and the atheist experience apparently had a prior conversation with G-Man where they were asking him to justify slavery the slavery verses in the Bible G-Man is a particularly childish believer he does not know the Bible um, with respect to the basics like how to be saved so I, I have to ask myself if he's even a believer but he is right when he says that slavery was condoned in the Bible. There were rules in the Mosaic Law, which the atheist experience guy was quoting in the video that's linked in the video description, about how to have slaves and what to do with them. Those things are true. They're really there. And one can say a great deal about them, and I'm going to say some things. But there's a larger issue that's being ignored that needs to be addressed as a primordial justice issue about whether you want to accept the Bible or not. The Bible is saying that slavery is freedom. Okay, it really is. That's, that's one of the main themes of the Bible. It is better to be a slave of God, owned by God, than it is to be free on your own. It is the central theme of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Christians in the New Testament call themselves slaves. It's unfortunately translated as servant, but it doesn't mean servant. It means slave in the way you and I would understand the term today. The Greek word is doulos. The Hebrew word is abad or avad in modern pronunciation. Christ himself is called a slave, Avdi, my slave, literally. And that's in Isaiah 53, the beginning of it, which actually begins in Isaiah uh, 52, 13. 50, yeah, 52, 13. It says slave. It does not say servant. Slavery in the Old Testament and slavery in the New Testament were institutions that were um, culturally widespread. And you have to understand the Bible in the terms that it was written at the time. But the Bible is supposed to represent issues and principles for all time. And it's using terms written in the cultural understanding of that time to tell you God's plan for all time. So yes, this is a justice issue and I can understand why the atheist experience would consider this idea to be potentially at least immoral. But let's go through what the definition of slave is and then you can say well I think the Bible's a load of bunk and no I still don't believe in God or not. See my whole channel is dedicated to auditing what the source text actually says and then you make your own decision. I can't make it for you and I'm not trying to convince you to believe in God or not, okay? The text is saying slave. It calls Jesus Christ himself a slave. Paul writes, he says, Paul, a servant of God. That's not saying servant. That's saying slave. And in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, slave had a very particular definition. You became a slave of somebody anywhere in the world. This isn't just the Bible's ideas now. You became a slave if you owed a bunch of money and somebody came along and said, Hi, I will pay your debt 
if you will become my slave. That gave the owner of the other human being the right to do anything to you. And a lot of people sold themselves into slavery to pay off a debt. It was a matter of honor in the ancient world that you paid your debts. And so they would sell themselves into slavery so that the person who paid the debt bought was entitled to the entire lifetime of the person he bought. And he could make that person into any kind of occupation. He could kill that person. He could beat that person with or without justification. Now later on in the Roman Empire there were rules of justification. But in the beginning it wasn't that way. And at the time the Old Testament was written, it wasn't that way. Okay? I, I want to fill you in on what the background of slave means. I'm not trying to justify it. I'm just trying to define it so you know what it meant. Okay. <coughs> so, Joe Blow buys Jane Doe as a slave. Joe Blow could rape her if he wanted. He could kill her if he wanted. He could mutilate her if he wanted. Or he could treat her well if he wanted. Okay. Jane Doe's debts were therefore paid, and then Joe Blow could turn around and sell Jane Doe to somebody else any time he wanted. That was established cultural practice then in the ancient world. Okay. So when the Bible is talking about rules about slavery in Exodus, I think they used uh, Exodus 21 as the example, or Exodus 22. Um. It's talking in those cultural terms. Alright? But God does not say, and this is really important to, to understand the difference, because there's a lot of talk about slavery in the Bible, and you've got to read it all to understand the whole picture. God does not say, go out and make slaves. There's no command to go out and make slaves, and G-Man was right to bring that up. Okay? It allows it, but it doesn't say go out and make slaves. Okay? The other thing it doesn't the other thing that's different in the Bible versus the common practice of slavery at the time was that you never were allowed to mistreat your slaves because then you would be guilty of a crime before God. That's a really important thing to say. The second thing about it that you have to know. If you mistreated your slaves, you were guilty of a crime before God. It was a spiritual matter. All right? And, of course, you know, when you stop to think about it, why would you go to the time and expense of buying somebody and then turn around and mistreat them? Do you knife your own couch? No. You take care of it. Because slaves were really expensive. And, in fact, what was the downfall of the Roman Empire and the Greeks, and oh golly, every single empire I can think of offhand, going all the way back to ancient China, is that the slavery was practiced too, too much, and the owners felt a certain obligation to take care of their slaves, and it ended up being too expensive. I'm not, I'm not saying that slavery is moral. I'm just explaining what the history was, okay? Now, the next point that you need to understand about it is that in the biblical definition, it, the kind of slavery that God condones meant that, and you know, the phone call guy, an atheist experience cited this, that if it was a Hebrew slave, you had to set him free after seven years. That has to do with the laws of Jubilee, which is a little too complicated to explain here. But if he can't, if he, you know, he got a wife or whatever he was married during, then um, nobody goes free, or the wife and children remain behind. Um, there was another law that the atheist experience failed to to mention, and for this purpose, he's being a little disingenuous about what the Bible actually says about slavery. Is that there's another law in there? And I'll have to go look up the verse. But if a slave wants to remain a slave for life wants to there was a ceremony where you were to back the slave against the wall take an awl a w l and stick it through his ear that's the origin of pierced earrings okay in other words slavery wasn't necessarily a bad thing 
Some people wanted to be slaves for life. They fell in love with their fa the family for which they were slaves. They fell in love with their masters. And they didn't want to stop being slaves. So there's two sides to the slavery question. And it really focuses on how you're treated. Okay? There were slaves who wanted to become and stay slaves. So one of the other ways that you became a slave in the ancient world was that you chose to be one. And for a lot of people, that was a really cushy job to be a slave. You would be working in a great house. You would have nice clothes. You would have good clothing. You would be given an education. You would be given full medical care. It was a sought-after job to be a slave in the ancient world if it was with a great house that treated its slaves well. People wanted to be slaves. They wanted to give up their freedom and be slaves because of the kind of job they'd have. That was an extremely popular institution in the ancient world. Okay? Now, again, you can argue, well, how moral is that? Well, I'm, I'm not dealing with the morality yet. I'm just talking about what the facts were, what the practice was. Another practice that was common, very common, the most common, in um, how you got slaves was that city A would go to, city state A would go to war with city state B. And if city state B lost, then its men and women and children and things would all be parceled up and sold into slavery. Now, if you want to call the Bible immoral, this is the place to do it. Because the Bible uses this metaphor a lot. It uses it in Matthew 7. It uses it in Matthew, what is it, 21 or 23 about how Christ makes slaves of everybody. It is specifically referenced as slavery in Isaiah 53, 12. It's a promise that Christ inherits all the people as his slaves. Do you want to call the Bible immoral? This is the best way to do it. As his slaves, Isaiah 53. And I exegeted Isaiah 53 in the Hebrew, and I showed the meter and all that other good stuff. You can see it in my Isaiah 53 meter hypothesis videos are in my Psalm 90 playlist. That's the future promise to Christ. doesn't get bigger than that as far as if you want to call the Bible immoral. The promise to Christ is that he's coming back, and everybody on earth is going to become his slaves. Everybody. And Christians in the New Testament call themselves Christ slaves, as I've already said. I personally am a Christian. I am a slave of Christ. I am glad to be one, and I have pierced ears. In fact, that's the objective, is to get your ears to be pierced so that you're hearing him. Now, you can say I'm stupid. You can say I'm bad. You can say I'm wrong. You can say I'm immoral. I wouldn't personally, and this is where i got to flip it over, I wouldn't personally want slaves. And Paul, in fact, was urging Titus to free his slaves. But it's a legal institution in the Bible in those days. But even as a legal institution in the Bible in those days, and not restricted to the Bible, there was a huge debate going on amongst the Romans and amongst the Egyptians and amongst the people in the Levant about they don't really want to keep slaves because there was an ethic that went with it. Again, you want to call it immoral, you do what you want. I'm just giving you the, the ideas. The ethic was that if you bought somebody as a slave, you took care of them for life. In other words, the slave would end up becoming maimed, the slave would end up becoming too old, and you had to take care of that slave. That was the ethic amongst the nobility, pagan and Christian, that existed, and that's the ethic that's in the Bible too. Now you can want to call it immoral, fine. But there was a huge movement, therefore, as a result of this ethic, and the same thing would happen, happen in later periods um, in the world. That, hey, I can't afford to buy a slave and have him be my slave for life and food, feed and clothe him and house him and, and take care of him when he gets sick. I can't afford that. 
So what a lot of masters would do, and Paul was urging Titus to do this very thing in the book of Titus in the Bible, free your slaves. And Paul, everything Paul writes is saying, hi, I'm a slave of Christ, and that's a higher freedom than if I were not a slave. It's the theme of the Bible. Now, does that mean that the Bible is immoral? Well, that's your choice. But understand the ethic of slavery was that if you owned a slave, you gave your life to the slave too. The king is the chief slave. Not only in the Bible, but in pagan culture at the time. That's the whole idea of oriental kingship. Is that the king is the chief slave. Everything in the Old Testament and the New Testament is about what constitutes slavery and who is a slave. The king is a slave to his subjects. The subjects are the slave to the king. I'm a slave to Jesus Christ and he's a slave to me and he died for me. Now is that moral or not? Well that's up to you to decide. Is slavery something that a Christian should practice today? Hell no! And if you want to know personally, and I'm going to just speak my opinion now instead of historical fact, I have a real problem with this future promise in Isaiah 53.12 that tells me, Hi, brain out, I'm turning you into a mature king in Christ, a mature slave who thinks just like Christ does, and as a result of which you're going to own people forever in heaven. I have a problem with that. Personally, this is my personal opinion. I have a problem with that. I'm trying to figure out how to adjust to that. Because I'm sure of God's existence. I know you're not and don't don't feel bad or I'm not putting you down because you're an atheist. There's nothing wrong with being an atheist at all. But I'm trying to also show you that if you changed your mind and you decided you wanted to believe in God, preview of coming attractions, it's a problem to know, hi, I'm going to make you a king and you're actually going to own your kingdom and all the people in it. That's Isaiah 53.12. And I exegeted it from the Hebrew, so I'm not talking from translation. I'm talking from the real Bible text. I have a problem with that. And if I ever become an atheist, this, this will be why. But so far, I understand what God is saying. And I'm not pretending to you that it's easy or sugar-coated. Sorry this audio is so long. You want to talk to me about it more? Fine. I'm doing uh, Friday uploads in my Sat Strat series to talk myself through this issue about how I'm supposed to be a king after I'm dead and I'm going to own people, which I don't want to do. Peace out.